Happy New Year, if it's not too late to be saying that already. I thought it was a good time of year to look back at the cost of ownership. I've now owned this car for nearly exactly two years. So I've got quite a lot of data, if you like, on the cost of running and owning a load six each. It's the kind of question that I find quite interesting when looking at other cars to own, and it was one of the few points of logic for buying this car. In theory, it should be fairly cheap to run. It's got a reliable Toyota 1.8 litre engine. It's got fairly small wheels, so tires should be quite cheap to replace. It's quite light, so it shouldn't chew through consumables like brake pads. But how has that played out? So I bought the car at the end of 2021 and I had a full year in 2022. The cost of ownership in that first year, I think, was very reasonable. It was very well looked after before I bought the car. For those of you that have seen my previous videos, you'll know that the previous owner used to keep it in a garage, in a sort of um, managed tent, uh, a, a, a carcoon it was called. Um, so it was in a managed environment and it was moddy coddled. So the first year was really not very expensive at all. The only thing that was outside of the ordinary, if you like, were tyres. So I put four new tyres on the car. Um, the previous tyres were pretty aggressive track tyres. They really weren't very well suited to use on the road um, and they were particularly bad in the wet. Because I've done all of my driving on the road, I put something that's a bit more suitable for that uh, type of ownership. Um, now, as I said, the wheels are fairly small, so actually four new tyres really wasn't that expensive. Um, £350 for four tyres. The only other thing was regassing the air conditioning. So when I bought the car, the air conditioning worked perfectly fine. Um, by the summer, they are my brakes. By the summer, it really wasn't working very well. So the, the air conditioning was regassed. That was 114 pounds. Um, and then it worked perfectly well. People complain about the air conditioning in Elise's and Exige's. Yes, it's not brilliant. But honestly, it's perfectly fine and keeps you fairly cool. So that worked fine, £114 that was. Beyond that, it was the standard insurance, which was just under £600 in year one. Uh, bear in mind, it was road parked in central London, so I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, there was the MOT, which ended up costing about £100 because I needed to get some new number plates printed. As soon as the guy saw my car, <laughs> he said, you failed. And I was like, why? And he said, because your plate isn't standard. It's the right font, it's the right size, um, it's really pretty standard. Um, the only thing that's not quite right, bloody hell, this is tight. The only thing that's not quite right is the spacing. So there should be four characters followed by three, and I think I've got six followed by one, or something like that. Um, I'll put a picture on the screen if I can work out how to do it. So that cost about £100, um, and then beyond that it's just tax, which is around about £400 a year, just less. So that means in the first year of ownership, the car cost me £1,500 to run. Now that's without fuel, but that depends, you know, where you're going to fill it up, how many miles you do, etc, etc. Um, I always put the higher octane fuel in because that's what's recommended. I don't think it would cause any great problems if I didn't, but it can. For those that watch um, Matt's channel where he rebuilds all sorts of exotic cars, he rebuilt an RS6 and the engine blew because it had lower octane fuel in it um, compared to what was advised. I really don't think that would happen in this car, but 
to do what I'm meant to. Um, so yeah, first year, £1,500. I think that's very good. I think it's very good value relative to the performance that this car offers. And for me, it's a very special car. So I think £1,500 to, to run all in, including insurance, is really pretty good value. Now, the next year, so last year, 2023, was a little more expensive. That's mainly because you may have noticed there was a crucial element missing from 2022, and that is a service. And I'll be honest, that's partly my fault. I thought, well, not partly, entirely my fault. I thought when I bought the car, it had just been serviced. It hadn't, it had just been MOT'd and not serviced. So, I thought the car was coming up to 14 months without a service, albeit without having done loads of miles. Um, but actually it was much closer to two years without a service. So I took it in for a service, full service, all the fluids changed, it knew, needed new brake discs, uh, not brake discs, sorry, brake pads. Um, it doesn't need new brake pads now despite all of the squealing, that is just something you have to get used to in an Exige. I'm sure that they can be tweaked and improved but I've learned to live with it. Um, that service cost about a thousand pounds. It also included some tweaks to the uh, electrics. I, I, I've mentioned before I've had gremlins with the electrics, the car not starting, um, batteries going flat very quickly. So there were a few tweaks made there. And it's been much better. It starts pretty much on the button. In fact, there goes another Lotus. Um, so yeah, that first service was really rather expensive. It was about a thousand pounds. I then, then had the other cost, standard cost. So insurance was actually slightly cheaper in year two. It was 540 pounds. Um, tax again was just under 400 pounds. And I did, unfortunately, need to get the air conditioning topped up once again, which is a bit of a red flag if I'm honest, two years in a row. What that means is, this year I almost certainly need to get the air conditioning system fixed if I want it to work as opposed to regassed. This second time when I had it regassed, it stopped working almost immediately. So the first time it was regassed, I had the whole summer perfectly fine. This second time, it gave up within a week, um, which was not ideal because I was on a road trip through Europe and it was that point in time where everything was on fire. Greece was burning down. It was like a million degrees. So everywhere we turned up to, we were sweating. Um, so yeah, that'll be a decision for this year. Do I get the air conditioning fixed? It's a clam off job. I've been told it's about £1,500, so pretty big investment, but really would make quite a big difference to usability in the summer. People say, take the roof off. Well, I can take the roof off, but I, I then can't put it anywhere. So if I'm on a road trip, um, that's a pretty limiting factor. What I did do then, post road trip in the summer, was line up the MOT and the next service. So actually, in 2023, the car had two services, and that's partly why the year was more expensive. Um, I was probably overcompensating, to be honest, for the prior year where it didn't have any services. Uh, but that second service was a basic service. It was just, uh, it was about 350 pounds, so not so expensive. What that means is, year one, 1,500 pounds. Year two, much more like 2,500 pounds again without fuel so two years we take the average it's been two thousand pounds a year to run now as i've mentioned i think that this year 2024 may be more expensive insurance immediately is more expensive i don't know why i've got another year's no claims i've moved house to a safer area um but it's gone up it's about 700 pounds this year i think that is across the board just across the market um, if I do the air conditioning fix, that's £1,500. 
obviously it needs service and um, tax so this year could easily end up costing three thousand pounds or more um, the other thing that I'm interested in looking at this year is upgrading the stereo uh, not really because I'm an audiophile but what I'd quite like is Apple CarPlay it would make the car that much easier to use more comfortable I know that this is not a comfortable car that's not really what it's about but I think I would get good value out of that um, but that in itself would become quite an expensive escapade. The stereo would be around £500 from what I can see. Um, and then I'd probably upgrade the speakers at the same time. Not the kind of thing where I'd expect to get my money back, but it would make the car more enjoyable for me to use. So there we go. Two years ownership, £1,500 year one, £2,500 year two, an average of £2,000 a year to own and run the car. I feel like that's very good value. Interested to hear your thoughts. Hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully you found that useful if you're thinking about buying a Lotus and wanting to know how much it costs to run. Um, I feel like it's very good value. So yeah, like, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you back here very soon.